Hi, Vicky. How are you? I'm doing well today, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm doing well because I'm in holiday mode. Yes, I know. <laughs> so the holiday is just around the corner, and also Christmas. Yes, it is yes, just yeah. around the corner. In five days. In five days, yes. Yeah. Hmm. So today it's the last time to see you, actually. <laughs> oh, last time in 2023. Yeah. So this is the last time to recording mm. our podcast. It mm. is. Yeah. Last podcast of this year. Mm. Yes. And I thought it be it would be good to talk about the Christmas story today. I think that's a very good idea. Yeah. A Christmassy theme. Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, here in Japan, we are all about the festive decorations and the special mm. dinners. I mean, KFC. Um, but <laughs> not everyone's familiar with the original Christmas tale. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I just vaguely remember doing a Christmas play back in mm -hmm. kindergarten. So, I so was... you did the nativity play. Nativity play, oh, you say that. Mm. Yes, it's about the birth of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And I was cast as an angel in the play. <laughs> I, I remember it, but that's it. I, I didn't even know the meaning of the play. Mm. So Vicky, do you know what I mean? So, what kind of play I did? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's called a nativity play. And like you said, it's a play about when Jesus was born. Mm -hmm. And in the UK, it's really popular. Every year, young children, usually like five years old to mm -hmm. about 10 years old, but they usually do a nativity play at school. Mm, okay, so you mean... Oh, the children know the story. Everyone knows the story, yeah. We do it every year from when we're really, really young. Um, so like kindergarten age, like when you did it. Um, and usually we do it every year and we put on a play about when Jesus was born mm -hmm. and our mothers and fathers come and watch. Okay, yeah. I did the play in my kindergarten for some reason, but I don't think everyone did it in kindergarten. My kindergarten was mm, kind of special, I think. A Christian kindergarten. Christian, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and so, and after that, we don't have a chance to learn about the story at school. So I today I'd like you to explain the story for us. Of course, yeah. Okay, so this is a, a really famous story mm -hmm. in the UK, in Europe, in America. Um, yeah, okay, let's start. Mm -hmm. So the Christmas story. Okay. Okay, so it all starts with a young lady called Mary. And Mary is very pure and she's very religious and one day an angel visits Mary and the angel tells Mary that she's pregnant so she's gonna have a baby and the angel says to her you're gonna have a baby and the father is God so yeah she's pregnant and it's God's baby mm -hmm. so she's going to give birth to a very special baby which will be the son of god mm -hmm. and at this time mary has a husband and her husband is called joseph and a few days later joseph hears that he has to go back to his hometown because at this time, Joseph and Mary are living in the Roman Empire. So the Roman Empire was pretty big. Um, it stretched all across Europe and a little bit of the Middle East as well. 
uh, Joseph and Mary, they're living, they're living in the Middle East in, in Israel, but it's part of the Roman Empire. And the Roman Emperor Caesar, he tells everybody that they have to go back to their hometown because the Romans are doing a census. Mm, a kind of research. Yeah, a census is like a survey for mm -hmm. everybody in the whole country. Mm -hmm. They ask you questions like, what is your name? What is your job? How many children do you have? How old are you, etc. So the Romans wanted to find out information about everyone in their, in their empire. Mm -hmm. So Mary and Joseph have to go back to Joseph's hometown, which is a small town called Bethlehem in Israel. Mm -hmm. So they make the journey to Bethlehem and it's very long. It's very difficult because Mary's pregnant, mm -hmm. um, but they travel a long way and one night they get to, to Bethlehem. Okay. So it's in the evening, they're really tired, they're looking for a hotel. Um, it's difficult to find a hotel because there are so many people there. Everybody is going to Bethlehem for the, the census, the research. Um, and it's tough to find a room in a hotel. So they go to one hotel, there's no rooms vacant. Go to another hotel, there's no free rooms. Go to another hotel and yeah, they're getting pretty desperate. All the hotel rooms are full. It's really difficult. Until finally they come to a, a small hotel and the hotel owner says, I'm really sorry, we don't have any free rooms, mm -hmm. but next to the hotel, there's a stable oh. where we keep the horses and the mm -hmm. cows and that kind of thing. So if you want to, you're very welcome to to stay there for the night. So it's, that's it's... where they stay. <laughs> Okay, it's Sorry, harsh for <laughs> it's harsh for pregnant women to stay in a stable. Yeah. It it is, yeah, mm -hmm. it is, um, because it's not a proper room. But actually, I think it might be quite comfortable because <laughs> if you've got lots of animals in there, it might be nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and this is in December. It's going to be really cold. Mm, cold. They don't have heating in the rooms. So maybe a stable is actually the best place. Uh -huh. Anyway, so they stay in the stable and Mary gives birth to Jesus. Mm. Okay. And because it's a stable, it doesn't have a proper bed for a baby. Mm. So Mary puts baby Jesus in a manger. Manger? Yeah, a manger is, it's an old-fashioned word. It refers to like a kind of box to put food for animals. Uh -huh. So Jesus is sleeping in, in a box for, mm. for animal food, um, which is, yeah, not really suitable for a baby mm -hmm. and not really suitable for the Son of God. Mm -hmm. But people say that this is an important point because... Jesus is supposed to be very humble. Yeah, he's mm. he's the son of God, but he's also modest, he's humble. So from the very beginning he's he's sleeping in a an animal food box. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. So Jesus is born and the next part of the story, um nearby there are some farmers, mm. there are some shepherds. Mm. So sheep farmers. Mm -hmm. And the shepherds get visited by an angel, mm. which I think is the part that you played in your nativity oh, play. Okay, so that's the, the angel I played. So what, I think so. Is, what is the name of the angel? Um, that angel, I think it would be the angel Gabriel. Gabriel? <laughs> Okay, so I was Gabriel. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So every angel has a name. Mm -hmm. And Gabriel is a special angel because he, she, <laughs> he or she, I'm not sure. Do angels have gender? Okay, he, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the angel Gabriel uh, is a special angel because he gives announcements from God. 
Wow. Oh, so, so if he... God wants to make an announcement, God doesn't do it directly. It's mm. Gabriel doing it. So when the angel came to tell Mary she was pregnant, that mm. was angel Gabriel. Okay. And again, angel Gabriel comes to the shepherds mm. and he tells them nearby the son of God has been born. Mm. And the angels are, um, sorry, the shepherds are very excited and they want to go and visit Jesus, the, the son of God. Mm. So they go and visit him and they bring their sheep with him. And that's also supposed to be uh, quite symbolic because mm. Jesus is supposed to be very pure, very gentle, like a lamb, like a, mm. a baby sheep. So that's another important part of the story. And then after that, we come to a very famous part of the story. Mm-hmm. So a long way away in a different country, there are three men. Sometimes we call them three kings. Sometimes we call them three wise men. And they're very clever. And they understand that in Bethlehem, a special baby is going to be born. So they want to visit the baby. So they travel for a really long time. And they come to the stable in Bethlehem and they give three presents to baby Jesus. And the three presents are gold Mm -hmm. and frankincense and myrrh. Okay, so what were they again? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, two of them are a little bit unusual, aren't they? Yeah, I know, gold. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the first one, gold, Gold. I think. Yeah, that's quite easy to understand. Um, The second one is frankincense. Frankincense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the third one is myrrh. (laughs) Myrrh? Okay, so frankincense and the myrrh sound unfamiliar to me. So, yeah, they're they're very unusual words. Um, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't really understand Mm -hmm. what they are. Um, frankincense is, it's like a kind of incense. Incense. So something that you burn and it makes Ah. a nice smell. Mm -hmm. And myrrh, myrrh is also the same. Um, again, it's a kind of incense, you burn it and it it makes a good smell. Mm, Okay, I see. But I believe there there's a good reason for the three <laughs> wise men's presence. I, I don't think, yeah, gold and incense <laughs> hmm, are not for children's <laughs> present, <laughs> you know. So do you know what they mean or, uh, yeah, symbolize? Yeah, I actually, I had to do a bit of research for this mm. because honestly, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe just, you know, three old guys, they don't understand what presents are good for a baby. <laughs> so they just got, got some gold and some incense. <laughs> um, but no, there is actually a proper reason for it. Um, yeah, like you say, each of the three presents, it has a meaning. Mm. It has a yeah symbolic meaning. So the first one, gold. Mm. Gold symbolizes royalty and Mm. being a king. Mm. So, yeah, you know, kings have a lot of gold. Um, You saw the coronation ceremony for King Charles III. Yes. You know, everything was gold, right? Mm. Gold crown, gold scepter, gold. Yes, I remember it. Mm. So, mm, would you call. Jesus Christ, a king? Yeah, actually, he's Um, quite often, he's called the king of kings. King of kings. Okay, so that's why. Yeah, so he's like the top king because Mm. he's the son of God. Okay. So the second one, frankincense. Um, This has a religious meaning because... At that time, 
in temples, the priests used to burn frankincense during religious ceremonies. Mm. So the symbolic meaning of frankincense is, well, like a priest. A mm -hmm. priest uses frankincense. A priest, yeah, burns burns frankincense during the ceremonies. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Actually, even today, if you go to a Catholic church and they have a ceremony, the priest might be burning some frankincense. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you know what kind of smell smell <laughs> smell it is yeah actually i do have some frankincense oh um, you do have I burn it some... <laughs> yeah um yeah it's not very common but yeah. i like to have nice smells in my room mm -hmm. like incense so yeah sometimes i burn incense in my room mm. okay i guess it is like a secret kind of smell mm -hmm. because it's burned in a church by a priest it's quite a sweet smell sweet. it's nice oh. mm. okay yeah so the meaning is yeah religion like a priest mm. yeah. okay then so the last one myrrh mm. and myrrh is so it's a kind of incense and it comes from a tree um, it's like a kind of liquid that comes out of a tree and mm -hmm. it becomes solid and then you can burn it. Um, but I think a long time ago it was used in its liquid form during funerals. Mm. So before the funeral, the funeral director and the funeral staff, they have to embalm the body, the dead body. Okay. Embalm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So make the body nice, um, mm -hmm. put some kind of chemical on it so that the body doesn't go rotten, mm -hmm. put some nice clothes on the body, make it, yeah, prepare it for the funeral. Okay. Oh, so it's related to death, in a sense. Very much so. Oh. Yeah. So what's the meaning to give? Ma to baby Jesus. Yeah, it's a bit strange, isn't it? Giving mm. something that symbolizes death. Um, mm. I guess it's because Jesus died really early. Ah. You know, he was really young. I think he was about 32. Yeah. Um, and when he died, it was a special death because mm -hmm. he was dying for, for people. He was... Ah, okay. God, this is complicated. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to say this. Okay. Um, when yeah. Jesus died, he was taking on everybody's sin, everybody's yeah. bad action. So he died so that we could be free of sin. Mm. That sounds yeah. really strange now that I'm actually saying it, but. <laughs> yeah, d d does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say it symbolizes his sacrifice mm, or special death. Mm. Thank you, sacrifice. <laughs> yes, that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Ooh, I'm getting it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, apparently it's the origin of today's gift giving culture on Christmas. So the wise man gave three presents to Jesus Christ. So people now yeah give presents to their family. Is it true? It is. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah. Those were the first Christmas presents. Gold and frankincense and myrrh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nice to know mm, the origin of the present giving. Yeah, we we, we just exchange presents on Christmas for no reason <laughs> today. <laughs> so, many, many Japanese people don't know about this story and the reason why we are doing this. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 
that's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then. So that's that's about it, really. That's mm. yeah. That's the Christmas story. Okay. Thank you for yeah telling me all about the tale. Yeah. I hmm, just remember a few things like uh, the woman Mary mm -hmm. uh, who was <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> or the stable mm -hmm. where jesus christ was born it was something like that but i didn't know about the census <laughs> or the wise man or shepherd <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and uh, you mentioned the star mm -hmm. that navigated the wise man Oh, that's right, actually. Yeah. yeah, that's an important part of the story. So because Jesus Christ's birth is very, very special, mm -hmm. there was a special star in the sky, a really bright star above the stable. Mm -hmm. And the wise men, because they were very, very wise and they understood these things, they knew that the star was a special symbol. So because they came from a long way away, they were following the star they looked mm. in the sky, they could see the star, follow yeah. the star, and then they know they're gonna gonna find Jesus. Mm, yeah, that's why I have an image of a bright mm -hmm. star <laughs> about <laughs> Christmas and the, the star on the top of the Christmas tree. Yes, that's true, yeah. Yeah, usually Christmas trees have a star on top yes. to represent the star of Bethlehem. Yes. Oh, I'm happy to know that I played the role of Gabriel, the angel. <laughs> Maybe mm, it's a special. It's an important role. Yeah, it's an important yeah. role. <laughs> Gabriel is one of the top angels. Mm -hmm, top angel. Oh. Yeah, there's like a hierarchy of angels. <laughs> You've got like, God is like the CEO, and then you've got like the department managers and division managers. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, Gabriel, he's like one of the top managers. One of the angels. top managers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he has a special mission. <laughs> mm. Mm, okay. And yeah, you mentioned Mary and... <laughs> Mm, like, uh, so what was special about the woman? Was she a mm. normal person? Yeah, like why was she chosen mm, to, to yes. give birth to, to Jesus? Um, I think because she was a very good person, she was very pure, she was very religious, she used to pray a lot. Yeah, I think that was the reason. Mm, okay. Okay, that's why. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Because God God sees everything. God sees everybody. God knows what we're thinking, what we're doing. Mm. So God was looking down on earth. And yeah, he could understand everybody's feelings. So mm. he chose Mary because he knew that she was the, the most pure. Most pure. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh, that's nice to know mm. all of this story. Mm. I was a little bit ashamed mm. <laughs> not knowing the story, but just celebrate Christmas <laughs> casually. <laughs> No, no, it's okay. To be honest, most people in the UK celebrate Christmas quite casually. Mm. Um, we, I mean, yeah, we we do the nativity play, but mm. we, it's more about culture. We don't, mm. don't really believe in God so much. Mm. Yeah, it's similar to Japanese people. Mm, we yeah. think mm, just one of cultures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. So, how are you going to celebrate this year's Christmas? This year, I'm just going to relax. I'm staying here, staying at home, 
I'm taking about a week off work and I'm just going to relax and watch Netflix. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way spending your holiday. Mm -hmm. you, you need just to relax. Mm -hmm. You are overworking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How about you? What are you going to do? Hmm. I, I'm going to have uh yeah some christmas party <laughs> I, I mean yeah. a dinner with my family and mm -hmm. exchange presents there mm -hmm. and play some games mm -hmm. something like that mm. yeah and in japan christmas and new year's holiday is not Related. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a mm, normal weekend, I think. So for you, New Year's is more important than yeah. Christmas. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> so I think this is the last episode for this year. So how mm. was the year so far? This year's been good. Yeah, this year has been good. And I've enjoyed doing the podcast with mm, you as usual. Me too. I was so happy uh, that we restarted this podcast after a two month hiatus. <laughs> and my friends like to listen to our podcast. Uh, and I think mm, it feels like these activities have get to new connections or networks of people like one day a girl a junior mm -hmm. high school student was interested in what i do here <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah she wanted to yeah ask me some questions about this podcast mm. yeah, so she mm, she would do be interested in discussing cross cultural things or writing English articles. Uh, so that was impressive. Oh, that's fantastic. That's mm. that's really, really wonderful. And I'm really grateful to everyone who listens. Um, yeah, please keep listening. We're gonna continue next year in 2024. And if you have any ideas, please let us know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we are always looking for hmm, what we can talk about <laughs> next time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so everyone have a good holiday and a happy new year. Yeah, have a wonderful Christmas, a wonderful new year, and we'll see you in 2024. Okay, and that's all for today. Mm -hmm. Bye. Yeah. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.